is Frozen at the Rogers Center, March 18th to March 22nd. My goodness, Frozen is so popular. So this is a March break tradition. Join Anna and Elsa and Olaf and other beloved Disney characters on an unforgettable journey about love and friendship. After the show, we're going to be drawing for Frozen prize packs, which includes VIP tickets. You might be able to go and take the little ones. Let now, we want to talk a little bit about babies now, but in a very new way. It's Dr. Marjorie Dixon here is going to walk us through this controversial legislation that has just gone through. It's actually gone uh, past the House of Lords in the UK. In the UK. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So it's all about three-person babies. It's yeah. having three people create one baby. Why would you need to do that? Okay. So firstly, three-person babies have to be made in an IVF laboratory because otherwise, how do, yeah, do how do you do that? Yeah. So essentially, it's using IVF in order to prevent mitochondrial related diseases. So what are mitochondria? Remember biology class? Yes. Yeah, it's fine. So the mitochondria are like the energy soldiers of the cells, all cells of your body, but also in the eggs of the ovaries. Mm -hmm. Certain diseases are related to mitochondrial problems. So if the mitochondria don't work very well, there are diseases that are related to um, lack of energy. For example, your heart gets tired mm -hmm. or the brain gets tired so they can end up being blind. It's very rare. It's one in 200 children, but it's devastating okay. and it's progressive. So scientists have figured that you can actually, in the cell of the egg of the ovary, that's conferred, it's translated to children through the mother, so it's not a paternal illness. It's right. something that, you know, we talk about genetics. Well, this comes from the mom. If you can take an egg that has healthy mitochondria in the cell, inside of that egg cell, you can actually take the mother's DNA mm -hmm. out of her unhealthy cellular environment mm -hmm. and take a healthy donor egg, mm -hmm. which has a healthy mitochondrial cellular environment, mm -hmm. and take the mother's genetic information and stick it into the healthy egg, mm -hmm. and then fertilize it with the father's sperm. So two eggs, healthy mitochondria in one, mm -hmm. unhealthy mitochondria in the other. So you have essentially a donor egg for mitochondria. Right. And then you create an embryo using the sperm and the eggs together. And then in a laboratory, you grow it into a person and then you, well, to an embryo. Yeah. And you transfer it back into a woman's uterus. So it's in vitro fertilization, but you're actually modifying the cellular environment so that you can avoid illness. And these illnesses are devastating. Now, it's three-person babies because you're using two separate eggs and sperm, mm -hmm. but really when you think about the hereditary things, you may look like your parents, I look like my dad, I don't look like my mom was a stork, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but the things that are, are hereditary in our DNA is our height, our eye color, the shape of our face, the way we smile. All of those things are coded in 20,000 genes that are in our DNA. Right. That, the preponderance of that comes from mom and dad. The genes that describe the mitochondria are only 37 genes out of 20,000 genes. Okay. So if people are worried about the implications of three people in a baby, but really it's 2.002% people babies. So you're still getting you're still getting pretty much most of the DNA of parent one and parent two. Ninety nine point eight little bit of, of donor number three exactly. is in there. It's confirmed. But the reason why this is so controversial yeah. is because you can't really modify genes and then make an embryo and put it back. It's against the law. Okay. Genetic modification of an embryo for the purposes of creating somebody that's gonna grow in somebody else is against the law in Canada. So Health mm -hmm. Canada does not allow us to do it. Furthermore, in the UK, you weren't allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. If you think back though, 30 years ago before we had IVF to help people with infertility, that was also illegal. Right. So the UK has really led the way for a lot of the things that we can do from a medical perspective. It's it's semi-miraculous mm -hmm. that it's possible to take out someone's genetic information and give them normal mitochondria so that they cannot give illness to their offspring. I think for people that hear that story, they think that is amazing for women who have had miscarriage after miscarriage because they've had damaged mitochondria. Right. But then you think, what are the implications? Exactly. So a lot of a lot of us have heard about designer babies. Am I going to be able to play with the genetics so I can just make a blue-eyed nope. baby? Nope. Or 
uh, no. what no. are the implications there well, because, for going down that road? Well, I think that it's way, be, way far off from that at any time because, as I said, the genes that are involved in the coding for mitochondria, my mitochondria, your mitochondria, which we take for granted, but whatever, yeah. is 37 of the 20,000 genes that make us us. Mm -hmm. And also, it's not involved in what in as much as we understand, makes us us. So height, eye color, all the rest of it. However, it needs to be healthfully debated. And they have had studies. It's been very carefully vetted. It wasn't like the parliament didn't have expert panels and groups of people, including physicians who have been doing it in different models and have all of this experience in looking at the offspring right. to see how doctors don't want to do anything that can potentially give harm to anyone. There's also, though, interestingly, issues of consent because the child that's being created doesn't have the opportunity to say, I'm happy to not have this disease and to have my genes modified so that I can be healthy. Mm. That's the debate. So I think it's important for people to understand what this is and mm -hmm. that it's happening. This is historical. Yeah. This is almost as big as the first IVF baby to say that it's okay, but we know that 40 years later, there are a whole generation, there's a whole generation of people who then have had their babies who are healthy, happy, providing um, to, to society um, productive people who are very grateful for their existence and mm -hmm. who have also helped to push the argument forward because it was in the UK that that started. Mm -hmm. So now in Canada that we're having this discussion, we may now say, or somebody who has been afflicted with mitochondrial illness may now start to lobby someone and say, well listen, if I can be avoided this and the science exists and it can be done in a regulated and careful fashion so that there's no harm done to future generations and we don't get into the scary realm of designer babies. Right. I'd love to hear what you think about it since it is so controversial. Make sure you send those tweets out and key in at Tracy City Line and at City Line CA and I know Marjorie you'll take a look at those tweets as well because I think it's a good healthy debate yeah. to have, right? Absolutely. Because it kind of seems a little scary. It's it's scary. A little scary. It's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Science, science is why we're so healthy now. We have longer lifespans. We're able to do all of these things when we're old but young like us. Right. So the things that we have taken for granted, we have to remember to be able to push arguments forward and be wise yeah. about what we do. Okay.